All right, today we are going to look at potential energy functions. Specifically, how do I get from a force function to a potential energy function or vice versa? So our relationship is that the force is equal to the opposite or the negative of the derivative of our potential energy function. So let's just wrap our minds around what all this equation is telling us. So here I have a graph of the potential energy versus the position in the x direction. Now this is just a hypothetical one. But let's think about what's going on at any one of these points. So at this point, this is how much potential energy I have. Now if I move to the left, my potential energy decreases. If I move to the right, my potential energy increases. So think about gravity, and then we're going to make this analogy back. So if this ball goes up, it gains potential energy. What do I need to, what kind of force is gravity applying? It's always applying a force down. So if it goes and increases its potential energy, it's going against the force of gravity. If it goes with the force of gravity, it's decreasing its potential energy. So let's think about what this equation is telling me. It's telling me that the force is equal to the opposite of the slope. So at this green dot here, the slope is a positive value, which means my force is a negative value, which means my force is trying to push this dot in the negative x direction, means it's trying to push it down to a lower potential energy. That's our goal. This force is always going to be trying to push toward a lower potential energy, just like gravity is always trying to do. It's always trying to push the ball toward a lower potential energy. All right, so what are we going to do with this? Well, I'm going to do a couple things with this. I'm first going to show you how we find a force function given a potential energy function. I'm then going to talk about things called equilibriums. So you can even think about this, and this is just a neat way to visualize it, is you could think about this as a set of hills. And I'm just going to place my ball on the hill. Which way is the ball going to roll? The ball is going to roll toward the left. Well, is that the direction of the force we found earlier? Yeah. What happens if I put my ball right here in this little valley? Is the ball going to go anywhere? No, it's at a point we call equilibrium. How about if I put it right at the peak? Put it right at the peak. Is it going to stay there? The answer is yes. But what if I just give it a little tap? Oh, it's going to roll all the way down. It's not going to stay there. But if I have it down at the valley and I give it a little tap, oh, it's going to come right back to that spot. And so we're going to talk about what that means for those two points, our maxes and our mins of potential energy, which we call an equilibrium point, because maxes and mins of this tell us our derivative of our potential energy is zero, so our forces is our force is zero at that point. So let's go through that. Let's find the force function, then we'll deal with some equilibrium points. So the first thing I need to do is find a force function. In order to find a force function from potential energy function, I need to take the derivative and make everything negative. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of this and make everything negative. So my force function looks something like this, negative 3x squared minus, oops, I'll do that math in my head, I guess, 16x. So here is my force function again. I'm, here I'm using x in meters, um, potential energies in joules then, and force in newtons, x in meters as well. So this is my force function. This is telling me how the force or how the negative of the slope of this graph looks. Now, to find equilibrium points. All right, for equilibrium points, we need to find a spot where the force is equal to zero. So in other words, I'm going to set this equation equal to zero, and so I end up with something like x equals zero and x equals negative 5.3 meters. These are the two locations where the slope is zero. So I'm talking about these two points here, this one and this one. These are my equilibrium points. Now there's two types of equilibrium. There is stable equilibrium and there is unstable equilibrium. Stable equilibrium is that idea that if that ball gets bumped down in that valley, it comes back to the bottom. It stays there. Unstable equilibrium is that idea of that ball at the top of the hill. If it gets bumped, it's going to roll down the hill and possibly never come back. Okay. So here we go. How do I figure it out? Well, the easiest way is to graph your potential energy function and look at these two points and say, are they unstable or stable. 
Your second option is to, ignoring this first derivative you took, take the second derivative of your potential energy function and decide at these two equilibrium points if it's concave down or concave up. Concave down, so the second derivative at this point is negative, tells me that I have an unstable equilibrium. Concave up, the second derivative of this at this point is positive, so I have a stable equilibrium. Be very careful that you don't just take the derivative of force, because remember, there is a negative in there that's going to flip our signs, and that's not going to be good. So, that's how we find equilibrium points, decide if they're stable or unstable, and how we get between force and potential energy functions. Of course, when you do go back the other way, you are going to need some initial conditions, so how much potential energy does it have at x equals zero, for instance.